There are very few stories more successful in 2021 than what we saw with 19-year-old Reese Walsh. Walsh's electric play added an entertainment and excitement factor around the New Zealand Warriors that we had not seen in years. So let's take a deeper dive into how Reese Walsh went from a Broncos outsider to his meteoric rise to Rookie of the Year. Reese was born on the 10th of July in 2002 on the Gold Coast to an Indigenous Australian father and Māori mother. Growing up, Reese was already becoming a household name for his beloved Narang Roosters and at Kebra Park State High School. Through the junior grades, Walsh was incredibly talented. As a young kid, described as headstrong and an exuberant character, he was challenging for some coaches as Walsh struggled to understand why his teammates were not at his level throughout the junior grades. His junior coach at the Narang Roosters said that Walsh was a level above the rest and was a dominant and standout player that possessed excellent footy smarts. It would be in his later years of high school where he developed a maturity to match his play style, expressing a desire to lead. At just the age of 16, his name had already become known, even amongst the casual footy fan, especially on the Gold Coast. It was not all smooth sailing for Walsh though, as he would have to deal with some family adversity. Walsh has talked openly about his mother's struggle with drug abuse and her tendency to drift in and out of his life, explaining that he didn't have much growing up with his mother often not at home. He has not seen his mother since the age of 14, but is more than thankful for the dedication from both his father Rodney and stepmother Jody for keeping him on the right path and elevating him to where he is today. He would finish his junior career with numerous accolades representing both the Queensland Murray and Queensland under 16 sides, the Australian schoolboys and under 18 Queensland state side, as well as winning the national under 18 championship and Mount Meninga Cup with the Tweed Head Seagulls. His outstanding play would grant him an opportunity with the Brisbane Broncos on a development contract for the 2021 season at just the age of 18. Coming into the 2021 season, the Brisbane fullback role was up for grabs, with Jermaine Asako, Tessie Nui, Jesse Arthurs and Herbie Farnworth all in contention for the starting fullback role. Walsh was also amongst those names, but as before mentioned, he liked to back himself and with no clear opportunity at fullback at the Broncos, he looked for alternatives. An eager suitor was the New Zealand Warriors, who were looking for a replacement for Roger Tuivasa Shek, who was planning to leave the following year for Rugby Union. Meeting at the Warriors Central Coast base, Reese would agree to terms for the richest deal for an 18-year-old in NRL history. Three weeks later, the details would be confirmed to the public, with Walsh signing a $1.2 million deal over three seasons. The Brisbane Broncos were furious as their prized youngster was taken from beneath them. The Broncos were unable to match the offer due to being constricted in terms of salary cap. A week later, Walsh would suit up for his professional debut for the North Devils under his new contract with the Warriors. His pro debut was something to behold, as he would amass 20 points on his own with a two-try double as his side won 40-10. After that display, the Warriors were not willing to wait to the end of the 2021 season to get their man, which was initially agreed upon. They asked if they could sign Reese Walsh effective immediately, and they were granted their wishes. Walsh would suit up as a Redcliffe Dolphin under the New Zealand Warriors three weeks later and would score a try and three goals. Another standout performance. It seemed like now it was only a matter of time before he got that call up to first grade. To add to all this, Walsh would welcome in his first child with his partner Frieda. Walsh has openly stated how much he loves the responsibility that comes with caring for his daughter, stating, I feel like the family life and footy life are balanced because I can step away from the game and see my baby girl. The debut in the big time came unexpectedly, as he was given the last minute call up against the Melbourne Storm in Melbourne on Anzac Day. Head coach Nathan Brown was throwing Walsh in the deep end, and it's safe to say Walsh survived. In his debut in the fullback position, he would produce one of the great NRL debuts and ever present in every play, showing a never ending supply of energy. Walsh would finish the game with three tries, five tackle breaks, and even in the losing side, had become the headline overnight. Walsh was moved into the halves a week later against North Queensland and was given reins to the offense. Responsible for 14 of the 15 Warriors kicks in the match, he seared his side to the win with a try assist and 479 kick meters as he showed maturity and leadership. Fast forwarding to round 11 with Walsh back in the starting lineup after a short period on the interchange bench, which he still impressed off, scoring two tries in two games. He would face off in round 11 against the West Tigers in what is arguably considered Walsh's best game to date. His start to the game wasn't great as he misread a Joey Lelua grubber which led to a Tigers try, but a standout trait for Walsh is that he's shown so far that he forgets about the last play and bounces back with ease, which is what he did in round 11. 
With a team down to 12 men two separate times during the game, the Warriors showed resilience as Walsh provided us with not one, not two, but three perlers as he found his outside men with cutout passes. We were also given this special highlight that remains one of the moments of the season. This game would end with a memorable two-point victory for the Warriors as they just held on. Now of course I'm mounting on the superlatives onto Walsh's game, but he was by no means perfect. He would occasionally overplay his hand or choose the wrong option, but the instinctive nature in which he plays the game is what makes it beautiful. It's unpredictable and entertaining, and NRL fans could not get enough of him. In just seven rounds of action, he had a total of eight try assists, seven line breaks, 25 tackle breaks, an average of 131 meters, and four tries. He was now in contention for an origin jersey at just 18. Truly remarkable. Now speaking of remarkable, let's talk about the support for this alpha video today, which is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming, champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0, all across Australia and New Zealand. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. With this exclusive offer for you, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code alphakai at manscaped.com. I've been lucky enough to try the 4.0 and I've honestly been amazed by its performance. Like I wouldn't promote anything that I didn't actually believe in and in all honesty, it's legit the Tom Travojevic of below the waist shavers. It's that good. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It's as safe as an Alex Johnson anytime try score bit. Now that's safe. I honestly used to avoid shaving because it was awkward and an uncomfortable experience, but now my balls have gone from looking like Bunty of Foa to as shiny as the beautiful bald head of Blake Ferguson. So if you're sold on this awesome product, get 20% off and free shipping with the code alphakai at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code alphakai. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Now let's get back into the video. At just 18, it seemed Walsh would be much too young for origin contention, right? Well, if you haven't caught on, Reese's season has been nothing but normal. With the likes of Caelan Ponger and AJ Brimson out, and the 44-point thrashing that Queensland had just received, the Maroons coach Paul Green was scrambling for answers. With Walsh still just at 18, the rumours of his selection were considered nothing more than just rumours. So Walsh spent his night with his family and partner watching the newly released Fast and Furious 9. It was during the movie when he received a call from Greeny. Walsh immediately rushed out of the cinema to take the call and was given the news every kid dreams about. He had been selected to represent Queensland on Rugby League's biggest stage, the State of Origin. Walsh expressed that he had just been shocked but excited at the same time. He said he missed most of the storyline and couldn't tell you what happened in the movie. Walsh's selection meant that he would become the youngest ever Queenslander at 18 years and 352 days, with only 7 NRL appearances to his name to feature in State of Origin in the NRL era. There are a lot of criticism over the decision, with many exclaiming that Walsh was too young for the Origin level. I think Benji rebutted that criticism pretty well. If you're good enough to play NRL, you're good enough to play Origin. I mean, in terms of age, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you can, you can handle it there, you can go to really? Origin. Really? You handle think? It. 100%. The thing with Origin is you have to take your opportunities when you get them. And when you get them, you have to capitalise. And he's that kid who can capitalise with his skill, his smarts, and the way he plays footy. And he's not scared to take on opportunities that other players sometimes are. Now, unfortunately, not every story has a fairy tale ending. And this one for Walsh definitely didn't. A hamstring injury meant Walsh would miss out on his dream origin appearance. Even though it was a devastating result, the sheer fact that he was selected was an achievement in itself. I think it's safe to say that we will see Walsh in the Maroons' origin setup in the near future. Walsh's second half of the season post-injury was not as spectacular but still very good. The Warriors struggled fielding a team for a lot of the second half of the year due to COVID-19 complications and a deep injury crisis. Even despite that, Walsh tacked on another five tries to his tally, with himself now the permanent option at fullback as he replaced his predecessor, Roger Tuivasa Shek. Walsh made the best of a pretty torrid situation with himself playing a part in the three-game win streak towards the back end of the year, but success was pretty scarce. At times, it seemed too much onus was put onto Walsh to produce, which seemed clear in the struggle we saw with Reese against his former side, the Brisbane Broncos, towards the end of the year. At just 19 though, these things are to be expected and are all learning experiences. It's grim to think where the Warriors would be without his contributions this year. And at season's end, Walsh finished with nine tries, 11 tries, and an average of 119 run meters. Outstanding for a 19 year old. 
The responsibility he took in his first year is unheard of and his efforts rewarded at the conclusion of the season. With competition from Sam Walker and Josh Schuster for the RLPA Rookie of the Year award, Reese would come out on top, signifying how outstanding he was. He capped off what was a remarkable season, which he saw the meteoric rise of a player who captured the hearts of rugby league fans across the country. There are not many seasons that can top what we saw with Reese in 2021, and there's little doubt that he will continue to defy the odds in the NRL. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this look at the crazy Rookie of the Year season that Reese Walsh had. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the post notification button as videos will be out every week for the foreseeable future. And as always, thank you guys for watching.